We're on the cusp of a revolution primarily on account of the digitization aspect and the flow of information? No. That is an enabler. We are in, at the cusp of a revolution of how much money from the banking and formal banking system will start replacing the... Because everybody still borrows. They borrow from friends, family, chit funds, whatever yeah, they call it, yeah. right? So it will, that will increasingly get replaced. Interest rates will become more sensible. Banks will also force more discipline onto, onto these entities. And that revolution, which is of growth, of employment, of mm. exports, of companies M becoming S, S becoming M, and then M becoming hopefully in, you know, in India Inc. I mm. think that the seeds for that have been laid during COVID and we will see every year it start happening. You know, so let's talk about this revolution, Mr. Kant. And I want to talk to you about this revolution in the context of size. In the context of size. Uh, you've often uh, lamented about the fact that India has some world size companies, but nowhere enough. And for the Indian SME sector and the Indian MSME sector to grow and flourish, we need a larger ecosystem, a much larger universe of world size companies. Now the government in the last few years has done things like the production linked incentive schemes, ostensibly to build national champions and also to draw in foreign investment and build international champions who build in India. Is that enough? Do you also believe uh, as we heard there from Itendra Dave, that we are on the cusp of a revolution. Is this an inflection point for the Indian SME? So, uh, Shireen, uh, I am a great believer that we are on the cusp of a revolution. We are on the cusp of a revolution because India has to grow at high rates in the next three decades. But for that to happen, uh, MSME sector must grow. And for that to happen, three things have to happen. One is, MSMEs must focus on quality, quality, and quality. That's number one. They must make quality products to penetrate global markets. We are not selling in India alone. We are a part of a global value chain. The value you get by exporting and becoming a part of the global value chain, chain is about 7x more than what you will get domestically. So you must make the top class quality products to penetrate global market. Never compromise on quality, number one. Number two, we need to, we've done a lot of work on ease of doing business, but we need to scrap all rules, regulations, procedures for MSMEs, make this the easiest and the simplest way for, only there should be no human interaction with any government officer. It should only be digital interaction. Make this the easiest, simplest way for MSMEs to grow and prosper. That's number two. Make India the easiest place to do business in, like uh, Singapore or New, New Zealand now is the easiest place to do it. So we should aim to be the easiest place to do business in, number two. Number three, to my mind, uh, we've, now we have access to data of bank, insurance, etc. But soon we'll have access of data through account aggregator system of the invoices and the way bill to the account aggregator and therefore greater credit in a transparent manner will start flowing to the MSMEs because for them to grow bigger and bigger and bigger, they need greater credit. And fourth, I'm a believer that MSMEs will happen only if India has vast number of large companies because how did MSMEs come up? When Maruti came in and became a large company, you had tire two producer, tire three producer, tire four producers. So we need a vast number of MSMEs. After all, whom will they supply to? They'll supply to large companies who will then sell India or abroad or wherever. So you need large companies, you need backward forward linkages with MSMEs. They should supply and they should then be paid promptly. And therefore, India needs very many large companies. And when we conceptualize PLI, PLI was designed that we create large companies. We make things bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in five years' time. And in five years' time, make India productively the most efficient economy in the world. And we were giving ourselves five years' time to make India 
more competitive than China is right now. That, was the cha that is the challenge before the country, that make ourselves in logistics, through Gati Shakti, through a whole range of scene, through better roads, better ports, providing linkages that in five years' time, India should be more productively efficient than any other country in the world, and then make these MSMEs grow and prosper. You know, I, I want to pick up on, on uh, both what we heard there from Mr. Kant as well as Mr. Dave and come to the audience. Let's do a quick straw poll of the audience. Do raise your hands if you're in agreement with Hitendra Dave that Indian SMEs are on the cusp of a revolution. Oh, that's, that's not, I wouldn't say that's even 50% of the room. I'm trying to understand why the business confidence of the Indian SME is not reflecting what we heard from you. Let me also understand, again, from uh, this room, if you believe that ease of compliance has improved significantly. If you believe that ease of compliance has improved more than 50% in the last few years, raise your hands. That's an even smaller, smaller number than the previous, than the previous show of hands. So let's address this issue. While, you know, we might rank better on ease of doing business indices, etc., this room seems to be telling you a different story, Mr. Kant. Where do you believe the missing gaps are? Where do you believe we need to do the work? Uh, so one is that uh, I think the government of India has become very easy and simple. Uh, a lot of homework needs to be done by the states. Uh, most MSMEs get in touch with the state governments. We need states to become even more competitive by scrapping a lot. So we've done this exercise on uh, rules regulation. Most of them relate to the states now. And therefore, a lot of rules regulation procedures need to be scrapped by the states. And uh, therefore, my view is that we need about uh, 10, 12 Indian states to grow at about 10% plus. And if they grow at 10 to 12% plus, then India will grow at high rates uh, for the next uh, decade and a half or two decades. That's important. Uh, the, the real energy has to be brought into the states now. Let's talk about one of the challenges that I would imagine that many of these uh, participants in the room face, and that is the cost of capital. It's not just access to capital, but it's also the cost of capital. We've seen what's happened as far as global interest rates are concerned, the U.S. Fed hiking rates by 500 basis points. We've seen the RBI uh, do a hawkish pause at this point in time. We've also seen where the 10-year bond yield is today. What do you make of where we could potentially be when we talk about the cost of capital? So I think at a, at a broader level, I, I hope m many people are puzzled, right? I, I am also puzzled why on the day the Fed raises rates to the highest in the last, what, 20 odd years. We're at the, a 13-month low in terms yeah, of the 10-year yeah, yeah, yield. Exactly. And, and, and you know, the, the policy rate in U.S. is 5.5 to 5 quarter now, but the two-year yield is below 4. It's, 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 and the 10-year yield is also just around 4. So it's... It is the bond market which prides itself on being way more intelligent, by the way, than the equity market, um, is sensing that something is wrong in the West. Okay? Now, we will see who is right and who is wrong, right? But to this audience or the viewers here, what the F F Fed funds rate is, what the RBI repo rate is, I think the direct implication is relatively low. That's much more people who issue bonds in the international capital markets or even raise money from the bond market locally. I think that's that segment which is much more sensitive. What is more relevant for this audience or for mid-sized corporates and below, I think tends to be the cost of funds of the banking industry. Now, your channel is making so much about the fact that bankers are out there in societies on weekends raising deposits at, at exorbitantly high rates. So, you know, just as they do business, if raw material cost goes higher, they try to push up the product price higher. We also, unfortunately, are also answerable to our shareholders. So, if the cost of deposits is going higher, then the lending rates will go higher. But that said, at least my observation, and this is an observation I have shared with many other senior bankers, um, at least in Mumbai, is that for well-run MSMEs, I am almost certain cost of funding actually has come down on a relative basis in the last four or five years or so. You know, what used to be standard double-digit, 
going towards teens. That's that's increasingly becoming less and less. But I do caveat that with well-run, you know, MSMEs who are working with banks to ensure that, that there is transparency and there is governance and there is disclosure. So if whatever I said in my earlier part is going to come true, that is I get so much information, not from the borrower, but from the data ecosystem, that my credit comfort goes to the point Mr. Kant makes that if the very large companies crowd in a lot of supply chains and MSMEs, then I am effectively taking a risk on the large corporate. So the borrowing rate for the chain in between should have some of that and some of the quality. So I would actually say that on average, the spread between RBI policy rate and rates at which MSMEs borrow over the years has come down quite dramatically and you can verify that separately also.